Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to The Blind Life, where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. And part of that is getting the information about what types of services and resources are available to us. So that's what we're talking about today. Today, I'm joined with two amazing people from the Foundation Fighting Blindness, and we're going to learn about the foundation, but we're also going to learn about my retina tracker. You may have heard about it. Um, not sure what it is. I'm on in the database and I'm still not even 100% sure what it is. So, <laughs> so we should have some good information today. But uh, first of all, introductions. Thank you guys for joining me. I am here with Todd Durham and Joan Fisher. Would you guys like to just give a quick introduction about who you are and maybe how you are affiliated with the foundation? Sure. Um, hi, this is Todd Durham. I'm the Senior Vice President of Clinical and Outcomes Research here at the Foundation. Um, just wrapping up my third uh, year here um, with the Foundation, and I'm responsible for all the clinical research that we do. So we sponsor our own clinical studies um, where we're, you know, like Rush 2A and the Pro-I studies you may have heard about. We're following the natural progression of these conditions so that we can inform and help design clinical trials. And I'm also responsible for my retina tracker registry, which is our, I think our primary subject here today. So I'm responsible for that program as well. Turn it over to Joan. <laughs> I'm Joan Fisher. I'm the senior research specialist in the science department at the foundation. And I've been working with the science department in many different uh, capabilities for quite a few years, over 25. Um, my main responsibilities now are the registry and the current associated genetic testing program. Perfect, perfect. Well, welcome to you both. Uh, thank you again for joining me. So let's start at the beginning uh, and let people know exactly more information about the foundation itself and what it's trying to do. Yeah, sure. Um, the foundation was founded in 1971 by a group of families um, uh, whose loved ones were affected with inherited uh, blinding conditions like retinitis pigmentosa, others are Leber congenital amaurosis, Stargardt disease. Um, and this uh, foundation has been around for a long time. We've been very successful um, raising money to fund research that will um, lead to preventions, uh, treatments and cures for the inherited retinal diseases. And um, that includes um, also uh, dry um, macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have, um, most folks would know the foundation from in their communities because we have a number of chapters they may be familiar, familiar with and may be organized in their community with. We have a number of fundraising events in those local areas, like our vision walks are probably the best known. Um, but many in the scientific and research community would know the foundation because of a very um, large uh, grant program. Since our founding, uh, we've raised millions and millions of dollars. Um, we've raised over $816 million to date. And last year we had awarded over 87 grants, 100 investigators. So really we are putting those raised dollars to good work to really understand the causes of retinal disease, what their implications are, um, and in the, all in the, in the hope and the desire to accelerate the drive to get treatments available to people with these conditions. Um, the other thing that I'll mention about the foundation is we, um, in addition to our chapter network and our, and our events that people will know about, we also have a venture philanthropy arm called the RD Fund, which in a, allows us to invest the dollars into companies who are developing treatments for inherited retinal conditions and dry AMD. Um, and then uh, when there are successful uh, business returns on those investments, they come right back for reinvestment into new uh, therapeutic development. So this is uh, called a venture philanthropy concept. And uh, that's uh, managed by our colleague, Rusty Kelly at the RD Fund. Um, and the other thing I'll mention, um, that we can talk a little bit about today is um, our, our registry called My Retina Tracker Registry, which really helps us understand uh, more about inherited retinal diseases. Yeah. And, and, one of the things that you guys also do, which I was lucky enough to take part in, is you do sponsor uh, genetic testing. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Sure, I can tell you about that. So the uh, current 
program includes sponsored genetic testing for uh, the rare inherited retinal dystrophies and also includes sponsored genetic counseling. Um, to be eligible for the sponsored testing, you have to have a clinical diagnosis of one of the diseases that we study. Um, you should not have had a similar test in the past three years. You would speak to your doctor if you're interested in being genetically tested. The test must be ordered by uh, a, a qualified physician who knows how to diagnose inherited retinal diseases. And it's a direct process for them with Blueprint Genetics who does the testing for us. They set up an account, they go online and they order the test after confirming a clinical diagnosis and also putting in some other general information about um, each person that they request a test for. Yeah, I a um, little bit of story about my situation. I had gone to my doctor and I've been going to my doctor, the same doctor for like 20 years. And finally, one day he said, wow, you know, you're your vision has progressed you know, a little bit outside of the normal for Stargardt's. And he said, you know, you might want to get it checked out. It possibly is not Stargardt's. And that really blew me away. <laughs> I've made videos about this, um, this whole journey to learn, get the my genetic testing and find out for sure what I had. But I was pretty upset because I've always had Stargardt's. It's always been Stargardt's. And I was like, what do you mean? That's, that's, that's who I am. I'm, I'm Sam with Stargardt's. <laughs> so I was very thankful though, after getting the, the testing and getting the confirmation that it is indeed Stargardt's, um, uh, you know, a weight was lifted because I'm, I'm proud to be a star guardian. So I was, uh, so thank you guys for <laughs> helping with that. That's not an uncommon story that uh, people, when they get their molecular diagnosis from their genetic testing process, it may be different from what they've been told their entire lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good. Well, and then part of my uh, experience was then after the testing, getting set up with my retina tractor, tracker, excuse me. So can you guys give a little information about what exactly that is? Sure. The My Retina Tracker Registry is primarily a research database of individuals affected by rare inherited retinal degenerative diseases. And there are over 20 of the rare inherited retinal diseases which the foundation studies. Um, the list includes probably many that you've heard of, retinitis pigmentosa, Lieber congenital amaurosis, Stargardt disease, Usher syndrome, Best disease, choroideremia, and achromatopsia. But obviously with a list of 20, there are many more that are not as well known um, and maybe are even considered ultra rare. So that's part of um, the registry and it's also part of the genetic testing program that it has to fall into one of the clinical um, diagnosis that we study. The registry was designed to share G-identified information with the IRD research and clinical communities about people with inherited retinal diseases to help accelerate the discovery of treatments and cures. Using the data in the registry helps us understand how common each type of retinal disease is, how it impacts people's lives, how the disease progresses, the genes that cause the disease, and helps researchers and companies um, to efficiently find people who might be interested in participating in research studies and clinical trials. Um, I think it's important to note that the registry is an observational study in itself. There is a stated protocol that is approved by an outside institutional review board whose uh, primary um, goal is to ensure human research protection. And when someone, you would probably remember this, when someone signs up for the registry, there's a very detailed <laughs> consent document <laughs> um, which explains uh, how we collect the data, how we use the data, and what protections are in place. So it sounds like it's a benefit for anyone, you know, 
doctor scientists doing clinical research, they have this pool of potential um, patients to to draw from. But what would be the benefit for the end user, someone like myself, getting signed up with the my retina tracker? Yeah, I think the the primary benefit is really the primary. Um, reason why the registry was set up to begin with is is because folks like you are interested when research op- opportunities come along, we're kind of play the role of the matchmaker. Um, <laughs> so n- knowing that you had Stargardt disease and if there were a clinical trial um, that comes along and the sponsor of that study is seeking help with recruitment for that clinical trial, um, we can use the information that folks have put in about themselves, um, including their molecular diagnosis and we would send out a contact letter on behalf of the, the study sponsor alerting you about this trial opportunity. And then it puts uh, into your hands the decision what to do next. Either you can pursue that opportunity or not. So that's the, the primary um, benefit of the registry to folks who have inherited retinal disease is really to be ma- uh, matched with a, a study opportunity. And we, we do a lot of research um, that's not a clinical trial. I know many folks are hoping for the day when they get the call that there's a trial available for them, but a lot of studies done on um, sort of the diagnostic journey, um, attitudes and hopes about, you know, future therapies, a uh, number of companies are doing uh, studies to understand um, really what that whole entire care journey is. Um, we've, we've, we sp- help sponsor and help um uh, disseminate surveys about various topics for academic uh, researchers and non- other nonprofits. So we were able to do a, a lot of research. And one, one thing I wanted to mention that um, where the, the registry and the genetic testing program are particularly powerful um, on, on two, in two cases. One is the, the underlying prevalence or how common these genetic diseases are is kind of an unknown um, if you think about it, we, uh, unlike conditions like coronary heart disease, where you have large population studies, in, in most countries have very large population studies, and even, you know, things usually looking at data that come from hospitalizations, you can get a sense for how, how common are certain diseases like uh, coronary heart disease. But here, in this case, these are inherited retinal conditions, and we don't have population-wide genetic screening. Um, it's just not feasible for most countries. Um, So understanding how common these conditions are is a a very important use of the registry. So we can understand, you know, what is the relative frequency of certain genes that cause retinitis pigmentosa, for example, is very, um, very important to researchers. Um, And the second one where I'll say these, these two are particularly powerful is helping understand which specific variants or mutations of a gene are responsible for causing a certain phenotype or disease presentation. Um, this is also an area where you need a lot of data to help make that determination. It's a very rigorous and scientific process. You can't just uh, be a scientific opinion or based on a few cases. That's actually these determinations are based on an accumulation of a, a quite a few number of cases. So having the fact that we have over 10,000 people tested through our program means we have a very large cohort to help really clarify what causes disease on a genetic level. Yeah, and actually, I was thinking about RP in uh, in particular because uh, it's that's got to be very beneficial for the the people running the studies because there's so many different types of RP that uh, to be able to narrow it down to just the the different variant that you're looking for um, could be very helpful for them. Uh, so another question is: Is my Retina Tracker only here in the U.S. or is it available to people living in other countries? It is available internationally. Um, Anyone who can read English uh, can register through the website. That's really the only limiting factor right now. Um, So yes, internationally. For the registry, for the Mm -hmm. genetic testing program, it's US only. Okay. Okay. If somebody is interested in seeing if there are any studies or clinical trials for their particular vision impairment. Uh, what do you guys recommend? Probably the easiest way to get that information. Yeah, a couple of recommendations. One, probably if you're interested in the one-stop shopping approach, uh, we typically recommend um, accessing the uh, website called clinicaltrials.gov. And we can provide that link later. Um, that is uh, almost 
all trials um, that are conducted um, with the oversight of the FDA will be captured and in that um, listing. Um, and the study sponsors, the, the companies who pay for these studies, they're responsible for putting that information in. Um, they use it to make sure um, that they have visibility uh, into their clinical trials and to help them with re recruitment too. So the, um, that's the one-stop shop approach. It is a, a, fairly, a fairly dense website, I would say, where you can input search parameters, for example. So if you were someone who had retinitis pigmentosa, um, you could type in retinitis pigmentosa in one of the, in the in search terms um, there in the condition being studied. Um, so there's a lot of valuable information on clinicaltrials.gov. And I think our colleague Ben Shaverman recently did, um, has provided some information on clinicaltrials.gov. And we're always happy to help um, anyone navigate that, that website and answer any questions about that. So that one, that'd be one recommendation. The second is um, our colleagues in the communication here at the foundation um, we, we frequently write about upcoming trials and trial opportunities, even if we're not recruiting through our registry, we have a um, website, um, through our website, we have multiple stories um, that come out about what's research in the news. Um, so that's a, another, another place to learn about clinical trials. Perfect. Okay. And well, a perfect segue. Uh, what is the, the website or any kind of contact information you guys would like to share if anybody would like to learn more? Sure. The website is www.myretinatracker.org, and um, it will provide an introduction about the registry and the genetic testing program. Uh, there's also an email, which I'd like to share. Uh, it's coordinator at myretinatracker.org. Anyone who cannot manage the website because of their visual impairment can email us and we will set up an appointment to go through the process with them over the phone. Um, if they don't use email, they can call 410-423-0594, which will get them to one of our registry, excuse me, coordinators who can help them. I will have all that information and plus some more stuff down in the description below. Great, great information, guys. Thank you so much for joining me again, um, Joan and Todd. I really appreciate it. And if you guys have any questions for me, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to help out. Uh, but that's about it for this one. Sam with the Blind Life here with Todd and Joan. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.